In this clip, we're going to draw a mask for our tree in Photoshop. So here I got the Photoshop opened, and I just got a square uh, image here. It's 2048 by 2048. And before I uh, start drawing, I'm using this plugin here, which is called the Lazy Nazimi Pro. And it's only 25 bucks, and it's just a great plugin for Photoshop to use lazy mouse like in ZBrush. So for example, you can just use a standard brush and it just makes all the strokes much more smoother and I'm just using the speed smooth settings which are it's, it's just amazing if you ever used lazy mouse and ZBrush it's pretty much the same thing for Photoshop and it's just really useful for uh, a lot of things so I'm just gonna go ahead and what I'm basically going to create here is I'm going to create a alpha that I will use for the entire tree to give it some of the tree texture and I want it to be cartoony and stylized so got my background layer here I'm just gonna create a new layer I'm just going to make the brush slightly bigger. Uh, make sure that the hardness is at 100%. Opacity and flow is there. And let's go into our brush setting here. And just going to make sure that I have the pen pressure uh, on. Minimum diameter, probably maybe 5%. I just don't want, I want to make sure that there isn't any super thin lines. So six here. Smooth is on. And that's pretty much it for the brush settings. I'm just going to go ahead and start start drawing the pattern here. The first line is the toughest one. Here we go. And I'm just trying to use sort of the pen pressure to make it slightly thinner, slightly thicker at places. Let's draw another one. And I'm not worried about tiling or anything like that at this point. I'm gonna start here. And I'm just drawing sort of default tree texture here. Maybe make the brush smaller a little bit and just go again. So what I'm trying to do here is just create this uh, sort of very standard uh, tree pattern here. And it's a little bit tricky, especially in Photoshop. It's quite much easier to draw it on a piece of paper than it is in Photoshop. Here we go. And just going to draw here. And just going to move it here. Here we go. And one more over here. Try not to overdo it, but in the same time, I do need quite a bit of density here, so it covers the entire tree. It's too repetitive. I want to make sure that these connections are not on the same level. And they're not as horizontal. I'm trying to make sure that everything is quite vertical here. And you can experiment with different alphas. You can even like find some on the internet and try to use those instead. I prefer to draw my own just because it's going to make it slightly easier for me. But there are plenty of these patterns online. You can always have a look at those. That will do. Now I'm going to go ahead into my uh, filters here. Other offset. And I know that my picture is 2048 by 2048. So I'm just going to offset it by 1024 and 1024. So now I'm going to make it tileable. So what I need to do is need to connect these lines here. So what it did now is basically move the image. So now we see the edges in the middle. So as you can see, there's a bit of a bit of a gap here. So we can now make that texture tileable. So I'm just gonna go in and draw these lines up. And I'm also going to use mask here. I'm just gonna use the black on the mask. I don't want to use white color because I need this to be a separate layer. I want to make sure that all the lines are always black and there isn't any other color in here simply for the future. I'm going to go back here into my layer. Draw that in. And I'm just going to go to mask again. I'm actually going to mask this whole piece out here. And I'm not too worried about perfection here because everything we do here is going to be just serving as a base. And then when we go into ZBrush, we're going to fix it all up. Here we go. Now like this, I'm just going to make a new layer and just because the mask is covering this piece here. I'm just going to fix that up here. Perfect. Going to connect these. And again, just going to use the mask here. Perfect. And just going to connect these ones here. Again, use mask. And I'm switching between the black and white at all times using X. But if you are doing this tutorial, you should really be extremely familiar with Photoshop by now. It's one of them tools that if you want to do 3D 
You just have to know it. Although these days with Painter and things like that, more often than not, people could potentially not be using Photoshop anymore. Although it's still a very useful tool and I use it quite often in professional work. So I'm just going to put this here. In fact, I don't really like this line. I'm just going to delete the whole thing. And again, that lazy mouse just does magic. If you were to draw it with hand and you were doing the strokes slowly, it would just be so wiggly and uh, it wouldn't be as appealing. Even now with the lazy mouse on, you can still see a few ridges here and there, but it really helps. Here we go. Let's just finish this up and maybe connect these here. And that looks pretty tileable to me. So now what we do is we select these two layers, right click, uh, merge layers. And let's do again, filter, offset. And here we go. So it tiles from both ways. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the lines a little thicker. I'm going to go blending options here. And I'm going to click stroke. And I'll make sure it's black. And just increase the size a little bit. Maybe by 10 pixels. Click OK. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and collapse this layer. I'm just going to create a new one. Select both. Merge layers together. And let's go ahead again into our blending options. And this time I'm going to select inner glow. And I'm going to make sure it's white. Opacity is at 100%. And I'm just going to make sure I'm going to play around with the size here. And I want to make sure that it's smooth enough that it reaches the middles everywhere, but no lines sort of disappear. Looks pretty good to me. And I'm just going to duplicate this layer right now. Hide it. I'm going to go filter, other, offset. So as you can see, we have this problem here. That's because the of the edges of the picture. So what we're going to do is I'm going to collapse it. Merge. And I'm just going to go select it. And just drag it a little bit out until all the black sort of fixes itself. And I'm going to go ahead and select all. Control A, crop, and click enter. Let's try again, filter, other, offset. And there's a little bit of a problem here, not to worry. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna select blur here, smudge tool, and make brush a little bit bigger, something like this. And I'm just gonna go in and smudge these in. And the mask looks pretty strange right now, perhaps. But not to worry, it will all make sense when we put it into ZBrush. I'm just going to move these up and down. There we go. Just need to make sure that they're all sort of pretty consistent. Again, it's nothing to be worried about if you have slight glitches. This is just to create the base for our tree. And we're, of course, going to be hand sculpting the rest. But this is just going to give us a nice uh, starting point once we put that into ZBrush. And that looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to go in and actually smudge some of these areas here. The kind of ones that have a little bit of an artifact in them. Things like this here. And the reason why I'm using smudge tool and not a paint tool, because we blur these lines in a specific way that will act like a height map. So if I used brushes right now, I would actually ruin that. So I'm just going to try and smudge it until it works. Looks pretty good to me. This line here is a little stubborn. That worked. That should do it. Let's go ahead and go filter offset again. Bring it back. And now it works. So this is perfect. I'm going to save that up. And in the next clip, we're going to go back into 3ds Max and create UVs for our tree.